Hello, welcome to another NSWP Global Fund Basics video. This one is about HIV program essentials, which have been identified by the Global Fund and their partners to be addressed in funding requests for HIV programs. HIV program essentials are a list of what should be evidence-based interventions and approaches to achieve the goals set out in the UNAIDS Global AIDS Strategy of 2021 to 2026, the 2022 to 2030 WHO Global Health Sector Strategies on HIV, Viral Hepatitis and Sexually Transmitted Infections, and the 2023 2028 Global Fund Strategy. So why should sex workers want to know about all this stuff? Well, because the funding requests for 2023-2025 Global Fund Allocation Period, which you probably know as GC7, countries, your CCNs, are now required to outline how well they are doing in each of the program essential areas. Understanding the program essentials will enable you to tailor your funding request submissions, enable better monitoring of what the CCM is presenting as evidence to support their funding request, and to strengthen your advocacy. So what are the program essentials? The Global Fund states that all programs, all programming, must be human rights based, gender responsive and informed and respond to an analysis of inequities. There are 22 program essentials under seven basic themes. The first theme is HIV primary prevention. There are four program essentials under this theme, condoms and lubricants, are available uh, for anybody that's at increased risk of HIV. Pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP, and post-exposure prophylaxis, PEP, are available for everyone who's eligible. Harm reduction services are available for people who use drugs. And voluntary medical male circumcision, or VMMC, is available for adolescent boys who are 15 years and older, and men who are in WHO, UNAIDS, voluntary male, medical male circumcision priority countries. And I don't know what those countries are, but I mean, it's, you can find out from the UNAIDS website, no doubt, and WHO website. So these are fairly straightforward. And all these services should be available to sex workers and if they are part of a global fund finance program should be free at the point of access. You might want to pay particular attention to any disruption in supply and availability of condoms and lubes and advocate for these to be dispensed by community led outlets. Also harm reduction services for sex workers who use and inject drugs such as needle and syringe exchange and OAT services are not always available and perhaps are an advocacy point that you might want to consider. The second um, theme is HIV testing and diagnosis. And there's three uh, program essentials under this theme. HIV testing services, including HIV self-testing, and safe ethical index testing and social network based testing should be available. Then there's a, a three test algorithm that is should be followed for rapid diagnostic test based diagnosis of HIV and rapid diagnostic, diagnostic tests are conducted by trained and supervised lay providers in addition to health professionals. HIV self-testing is probably the most helpful for sex workers, but these are not always 100% reliable, which is why a three-test algorithm is recommended 
to clinic or hospital based testing services. For criminalised communities who are reluctant to register with authorities, the self testing option seems to be the best and can also be an advocacy focus to ensure HIV testing kits are available to sex worker led organisations to dispense. The third uh, theme is the elimination of vertical transmission. So there's two um, program essentials under this one. That's the antiretroviral therapy or ART is available for pregnant and breastfeeding women living with HIV to ensure viral suppression. And HIV testing, including early infant diagnosis, is available for all HIV exposed infants. Now, if, as a sex worker who becomes pregnant, you are not offered ART, or if you have a young infant who is not offered, and I mean offered, not uh, insisted upon, offered early infant diagnosis of HIV, then this is something you should bring to the attention of the principal recipient, the CCM and the FPM. Uh, front portfolio manager. The next one is HIV treatment and care. There are again four program essentials under this theme. So there should be rapid ART initiation following a confirmed diagnosis of HIV. The HIV treatment uses eight WHO recommended regimens. Management of advanced HIV disease is available and support is available to retain people across the treatment cask, cascade, across the using the treatment, including a return to care. Oh, there's a, and there's another one, that CD4 and viral load testing and diagnosis of common comorbidity and co-infections, which is things like hepatitis, even TB, uh, and other sexually transmitted infections are available for management of HIV. So these ones are pretty much aimed at hospital based treatment services. Of course, they should be all be available to sex workers without prejudice. And that goes without saying. Then there's TB HIV. And there's two under this theme. People living with HIV with active tuberculosis are started on antiretrovirals early and TV preventative therapy is available for all eligible people living with HIV, including children and adolescents. As TB is one of the major killers of people living with HIV, these services should be available for sex workers. Monitoring availability of these services and sex worker access is important. And if there are issues, these should be brought to the attention again of the principal recipient, the CCM and the fund portfolio managers. Then there is differentiated service delivery. So HIV services, and that's things like prevention, testing, treatment and care, are available in health facilities, including sexual and reproductive health services and outside health facilities, including through community, outreach, pharmacy, and digital platforms. Then there's multi-month dispensing is available for ART and other HIV commodities. The two points to be aware of here, I think, are HIV services can be delivered by sex worker led organizations and the second one is that three or even six month dispensing of ART and other HIV commodities, perhaps for persistent sexually transmitted infections, should be the norm so that a weekly or monthly visit to a clinic is not needed. And then the final one is human rights. And there's four. Um, program essentials under human rights. The HIV programs for key and vulnerable populations integrate interventions 
to reduce human rights and gender related barriers. Stigma and discrimination reduction activities for people living with HIV and key populations are undertaken in healthcare and other settings. Legal literacy and access to justice activities are accessible to people living with HIV and key populations. And the final one is support is provided to efforts, including community led efforts, to analyse and reform criminal and other harmful laws, policies and practices that hinder effective HIV responses. You know, it's always difficult to know what to say about human rights commitments because they're usually quite vague. They may seem specific, but really they're not. However, they are what they are, so if you become aware of failings or lack of investment, speak with other key populations and bring it to the attention of the Fund Portfolio Manager and possibly even the Office of Inspector General. Well, that's it. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next NSWP Global Fund Basics video. Thanks. Bye.